Live from KSAT 12, the news at noon starts right now. A trip on a train has led to a ride in an ambulance for one man. San Antonio firefighters had to rescue him early this morning after he became trapped inside a car of a freight train. It was parked at a rail yard at the time near the 1700 block of Quintana Road. And as Katrina Weber tells us, firefighters believe he had been there for more than half a day. It wasn't so much a race against time as it was a struggle against steel. San Antonio firefighters had to bring out their heavy metal to take on a train car that had a man trapped. The rail guy this morning about 4.45 or so had heard him screaming and crying inside, so they, they started investigating. What firefighters say they quickly learned was the man who had hopped a ride in Eagle Pass found himself in a world of pain in San Antonio. They say he had wiggled into a tight space inside the freight car. Then once the train reached this rail yard near the 1700 block of Quintana Road, several giant metal coils came crashing down, each one weighing about 4,000 pounds. It's just sitting there hiding, and when they were loading cars, apparently, or somehow the, the load shifted, and it caught his foot in between two coils. A ladder truck helped fire crews get a view of him from above. With other equipment and about an hour of time, they finally got him free. And then we put him in a basket and and then we lifted him up out of the out of the truck. That particular train, according to firefighters, had been at the rail yard since about five o'clock yesterday afternoon. So they believe the man may have been trapped for close to 14 hours. He was taken to a hospital for treatment of his injuries, mainly to his feet. But firefighters say in spite of his troubled train ride, he should be on the road to recovery soon. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. A man accused of brutally killing a woman back in 2020 is back in court today. Rafael Castillo is charged with the death of Nicole Perry. Perry had her hands cut off with a machete and then hit in the head with an axe. Her body was found by a public works employee in 2020 off of south of W.W. W. White Road. The trial continued this morning with testimony from a man who says Castillo's cousin called him to dump Perry's body. The jury is expected to deliberate this week. If found guilty, Castillo is facing up to life in prison. Erica Hernandez will have the latest coming up this afternoon. Uvalde CISD board members met with an attorney last night during a closed session to talk about the procedural rules and legal representation when it comes to Pete Arredondo's termination hearing. But they stopped short of naming a hearing date. That closed session lasted over an hour when they reconvened. Board members unanimously voted to approve Walsh Gallegos as the legal representation. The board plans to tell families privately the date for Oriando's termination hearing before making a public announcement. Meantime, some Valde students are now back in class. Sacred Heart Catholic School welcoming students back yesterday after the deadly shooting at Rob Elementary. Many parents in Uvalde decided to pull their children out of the public school and put them in private school. Sacred Heart Catholic School says they began the year with more than 100 students in Uvalde. That's more than double their normal enrollment since last fall. The school year started with a special mass officiated by Archbishop Gustavo Garcia Sierra and his message to students. God wants everyone to enjoy glory in heaven. But is not our time yet. So we need to um, to carry on and to carry on with joy because uh, our life has meaning. Such beautiful words. Some families were able to get help with their tuition for this. And when it comes to security, Sacred Heart says it has installed ballistic grade enhancements to its doors and windows, eight foot fencing and a security verification system at the main entrance. Back here today, not just the first day of school for SAISD students, but also the first day students from Burbank High School will walk through the doors to its brand new main building. This is all part of a $78 million project from a 2016 bond. Sarah Costa spent all morning getting a preview of the new campus and has reaction from students and staff. It's like, oh, it's fancy. Senior Nevea Hernandez has a connection to Burbank High School. Not only did she spend her first three years of high school at the old building, but her mom and most of her family went to Burbank. So to have a brand new building with all the bells and whistles of design and technology, 
She says it's an amazing way to spend her senior year. I'm excited. It's new. A new start. The new three-story main school building with over 211,000 square feet is a big upgrade to the campus. It's part of a 2016 SAISD bond and has been a $78 million project. From a skywalk to big open windows, Principal Irene Thalamantes says it's a design that allows for open concept classrooms and workspaces in the hallways with smart technology available on every corner. We have a lot of soft seating in certain areas where students can sit down, charge their Chromebooks in front of a smart board, work together to work on their group projects. So teachers are able to be very innovative in the way they teach. Kedrick White has overseen the building and design of the new campus. He says it was built for and by the community. The community has been engaged and involved throughout, from the alumni to the existing students to, to this to community. So my favorite part is the fruition of, of dreams and hopes and aspirations for the entire Burbank community. So that really came to fruition. Even though there's a lot of new updates and technology in this new building, one tradition remains, and that's Luther, the original from 1970, and he's here to greet students as soon as they walk in. I'm Sarah Costa. KSAT 12 News. This noon, First Lady Jill Biden now dealing with a COVID-19 diagnosis. The White House says that she started to show some cold-like symptoms on Monday night. She did test negative initially on a rapid test. However, a second PCR test came back positive. Biden is fully vaccinated, double boosted. She's going to be taking Paxlovid and is isolating from her staff and others for at least five days. Meanwhile, President Biden continues to test negative. He came down with COVID-19 last month. U.S. health officials now saying there are 442,000 doses of the monkeypox vaccine for local health departments. It says that's ahead of schedule, due in part to the federal government's strategy to give doses that are one-fifth the size of previous doses. An estimated 1.7 million people are eligible for this vaccine. And as of yesterday, Metro Health reported 20 positive cases of monkeypox in Bear County. A significant milestone for people with hearing loss. Hearing aids will be available over the counter pretty soon, starting in October. People over the age of 18 with mild to moderate hearing impairment can buy certain hearing aids from stores or online for less money. The FDA just finalized a rule to make it happen. Health experts say hearing loss is extremely common, but insurance doesn't always cover hearing aids. They can cost thousands of dollars for a pair. Back here at home tonight, more people will have the chance to voice their opinions about the city's budget. So far, City Council has discussed rebates for CPS Energy customers, a property tax rate cut, and pay bumps for city employees as part of the proposed $3.4 billion city budget. And the city wants to know what you think during a series of community meetings. The latest one will be for folks in District 6. It starts tonight at 630 at the San Antonio Food Bank on Enrique Embarrera Parkway. And there will be several meetings over the next couple of weeks. That includes a pair of citywide virtual town halls. City Council is scheduled to vote on the final budget on September 16th. We have a heads up for job seekers in the community. Right now, Boeing is looking to fill 200 positions at its plant at Port San Antonio. It's holding a job fair until 5 this evening. That's happening at Workforce Solutions Alamo off of South Florida Street. They're looking to hire general electrical and structural mechanics that will work on different types of programs and aircrafts. The company also says those with transferable skills from other industries will be considered. We have more information for you on KSAT.com. It seems their work is never done. Road crews tackling the projects. For you, it means road closures. Traffic Authority Stephen Cavassa takes a look at the detours that folks might have to take in Bear, Kendall, and Comal counties. The work around the Alamo City continues through the month of August. Let's go ahead and see what commuters can expect because there is a lot happening there along 410 over on the west side of San Antonio. Now, this is an area we mentioned quite often, but barrier work will continue at least up until August 20th. This is according to TxDOT, and during that time, it's going to be from 7 in the morning to 5 in the afternoon. So watch for those crews out there. That's when you can expect a full closure of the northbound entrance ramp from Marbach Road. Let's take a leap this time to I-10 in Kendall County. 
County. Gosh, we all know that there's a lot of work that typically takes place out there. And according to text out the work will continue at least up until Friday, August 19th. It'll start at nine in the morning and should wrap hopefully by four in the afternoon. During the time, single lane closure on the westbound frontage road uh, from scenic loop road to US 87. Now let's go ahead and take an even bigger jump there to FM 725 725. Pardon me in Comal County operational improvements. Now this is current, but according to TxDOT, should wrap on Thursday, September 1st. It's from nine in the morning to five in the afternoon. During that time, drivers full closure of the northbound to southbound turnaround at I 35. But of course, that information along with other construction spots now on our website, grab your phones, open your camera app and scan that QR code that will take you directly to the case at traffic page. And that has the list of all the closures taking place in and around our area. Well, the rain is gone, but the humidity has stuck around. Coming up, we're going to talk about where the heat index could be this afternoon and our next opportunity for rain, as well as a check on the tropics. Hope you'll stick around. I'll have that forecast coming up. The Aggies pull off a pretty high rank in the start of the season. The AP preseason poll is out. Hard work paying off for students who are at the top of their classes. How a program at UTSA is helping them reach their higher education goals after the break. This week, thousands of new and returning Roadrunners are moving on campus, including some students who are part of the Bold Promise program. Those selected for the program not only have 100% of their tuition and fees covered, the university is also providing some students with housing scholarships as well. Tiffany Huertas has a look at how this program is changing students' lives. That pack, of course, definitely need that. It's moving day at UTSA, and Kylan Green is getting his room set up. I got my computer for school, of course. Kylan made sure to bring a special blanket from his great-grandmother. It, it definitely brings me a lot of comfort. She passed away, unfortunately, a few a few years back and it definitely makes me feel at home. The incoming freshman says this experience would not be possible if it wasn't for the Bold Promise program. It's definitely impacted my life and I'll also be a first generation college student. The program offers all tuition paid to selected students who graduate at the top of their high school class. When you're a senior, all you gotta be is a Texas resident, be in the top 25% of your class, and submit your financial aid on time by the deadline. For the first time this year, some students part of the program get to experience living on campus. More than 200 freshman students moving in today at Chisholm Har, part of the Bold Scholars program. Their housing is covered this year. Kylan feels grateful for these opportunities. My mom, she worked two jobs and everything, and it's definitely been hard for us. I'm very, very blessed, and I've worked hard in school for this, too, so I'm very, very fortunate for this. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. I guess the good news is it wasn't blistering hot when they were moving all those. Yeah, absolutely. You know, that is true. We had a nice break yesterday from the harsh temperatures. We did. We only got up to the 80s, 88 outside uh, yesterday. It's already 89, though, so we are warming up, and we feel that humidity out there. The aquifer, though, is up four tenths of a foot over the past 24 hours. That's some good news. Not some great news. Molds are up, too. High past 9,000. We'll have to wait and see if they go up for another day uh, tomorrow. Here's what we're going to cover in the forecast. Heat index back to near 100 both today and tomorrow. We do have a chance for some more rain Thursday and Friday and in the tropics there's an area to watch. I'll have the forecast for you coming up. I guess this is the price you pay for all that rain, huh? More humidity. Yeah. More <sighs> humidity and if it's not one thing it's, it's another. <laughs> Right, so let's let's be positive about things. Okay. At least we have had a weather pattern shakeup. It could have been yeah. a lot worse. You know, we could have continued with our triple digit uh, heat streaks. And thank goodness, though, uh, we are not going to see consistent 100 degree temperatures anytime in the next five to seven days. All right, outside right now, you can see those puffy cumulus clouds. It is 88 degrees, but guess what? It feels like 94 because of the high humidity, dew points are in the 70s. Winds are from the south southeast, a little breezy at about 10 miles per hour. Let's take a look at satellite and temperature across the KSAT 12 viewing area. Out to the west near Del Rio, notice it's still in the 70s out there. Pretty nice in Del Rio this afternoon. The reason for that is they've got a little bit more cloud cover from that low that moved through yesterday. 
88 in San Antonio, it's 89 in Pleasanton, 90 in New Braunfels, a lot hotter off to the east where there's more sunshine. It's 86 in Hondo and 84 in Yavaldi. Again, here's that low that brought much of our viewing area some soaking rains, especially south and southwest of San Antonio. It's currently working its way through the Big Bend, bringing West Texas some much needed rain as well. But the more powerful system is actually this heat high. You can see that that low kind of just put a dent in that heat high there in the upper levels and that heat high over the next couple of days is going to continue to make it pretty hot. So tomorrow will be closer to 100 degrees high temperature in the upper 90s. But just before this heat high can get comfortable over Texas, we're actually going to see a weak cool front push through North Texas and fire off a few showers and storms across Central Texas by Thursday evening. We could get one or two of those here in San Antonio. Now the front is going to fall apart before it brings us any cooler air, but it is going to continue to allow for a chance for some isolated downpours on Friday as well. So when we're talking about rainfall potential Thursday and Friday, especially Thursday in the evening, about 30% chance there for some isolated activity. Then over the weekend, we'll carry a 10 to 20% chance as well. So no big wash out rainmakers, but some more opportunities for rain in the coming days. And that chance is going to keep temperatures in check, preventing us from getting well above 100 degrees. So again, there's your positive spin on a toasty forecast. Your case at 12 hour forecast for this afternoon calls for temperatures to be uh, warming up into the upper 90s. We'll have a 10% chance for a stray downpour this afternoon from the coastal uh, regions, but generally it is just going to be a hot and dry afternoon. And then as we head into the evening, sun will set around 815 and temperatures should be in the low 80s this evening for a warm and breezy end to our Tuesday. This afternoon, though, if you have plans to be out and about picking up the kids from school, from daycare, that humidity is going to make it feel like it's closer to 100 degrees outside all across the KSAT 12 viewing area. Uh, and again, the big keys to take away from the forecast are it's going to be hot, it's going to be humid, but it's not going to be unbearably hot. We'll be looking at a high temperature of 97 tomorrow. It'll be a quiet day. Thursday, for the most part, will be quiet, but by the evening hours, that's when we'll see a few isolated downpours. High temperature close to 100 on Thursday before that weak front arrives. Friday, 30% chance isolated, 96 for the high temperature, and over the weekend, we may be dodging a couple of showers, but it's still going to be a fairly quiet weekend forecast for us. Coming up, though, there are some indications that uh, we could be seeing something in the tropics forming over the next five days. I've got a look at that coming up. Notice anything about that forecast? Not a 100 on that board. That's it's right. close, though, on Thursday. Oh, don't. Oh, no, it's that's close. All right. Don't jinx us. You know, I'll try they say about <laughs> horseshoes and being close, right? We'll take 99. <laughs> Still coming up, a look at the college AP preseason poll. The Aggies ranked pretty high. For we already knew that Manon Ginobili was heading into the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame, but now we know who's presenting him officially, Tim Duncan. The Hall of Fame announced that Duncan would introduce his teammate at the enshrinement ceremony in September, even though Manu indicated that back in April. Ginobili will be the fourth Spur to get the call to the Hall, and he is the second member of the Spurs Big Three, following Duncan, who was a member of the class of 2020 and enshrined in May of 2021. Alongside Tony Parker, the two won four NBA championships together in 2003, 2005, 2007, 2014. Ginobili is also the winningest player in NBA history. He's got a winning percentage of 72.1 of the games he played. Number two on that list, Duncan, 71.9%. Former Spur player George Carl also going in as a coach. The enshrinement ceremony will be held at Symphony Hall in Springfield, Massachusetts on Saturday, September 10th. And the Fighting Texas Aggies are ranked sixth in the nation to open the 2022 college football season. The Associated Press preseason poll released yesterday. The number six ranking matches the highest for the Aggies since the 1995 preseason poll put up at number three in the nation. It is the 16th time the Aggies have earned a top 10 ranking in the first AP poll of the season. And even more to look forward to this season after senior defensive back 
Demony Richardson was asked if this is the deepest team he has seen since he's been in College Station. And here's a look at the college football AP poll. Alabama, well, there's a stunner. Alabama number one, <laughs> Ohio State, Georgia, Clemson, Notre Dame, and there's uh, Texas A&M at number six. I know that just drives you nuts, doesn't it? Oh my goodness. Yeah, that hurts. That hurts. Lily, <laughs> she's over there laughing. I can see the bet already. Yeah, you and Justin. Yeah, what do you think? Have y'all decided yet? LSU's not on that list. No, LSU's not even in the top 25, I'm sorry to say. But it's preseason. Got, got a lot of guys. There's Nagy over there, there giggling. They just, they just cackling away. We will see, Justin Horn. <laughs> Did that sound ominous? Uh, yeah, a little. Okay. Uh, hopefully your team's a little more fierce than that, though. <laughs> Coming up in the next half hour, some tips to help you save money, plus how you can snatch the best interest rate for your next home loan. If you've been to the pump lately, you might have noticed some changes. Gas prices are continuing to fall, and that's good for your wallet. But is it just an end of summer sink or a sign of what's in store? Coming up today at 5, 12 New Sides, Marilyn Moritz explains what we can all expect in the next few weeks at the pump. Lawmakers from both parties calling for calm as the supporters of former President Donald Trump are still upset following that raid by the FBI at Mar-a-Lago. A Homeland Security bulletin says more are threatening federal officials. It says a few people have talked about bombing the FBI headquarters or starting a civil war. Last Thursday, a gunman tried to breach the FBI's Cincinnati office. Meanwhile, this past weekend, some protesters wore tactical gear and carried guns while peacefully rallying outside the FBI office in Phoenix. Iran wants compensation if future U.S. presidents withdraw from a future nuclear deal currently proposed by the European Union. That's according to a regional source briefed on the matter. In 2015, former President Trump withdrew out of a deal reached under his predecessor and kick-started strong sanctions toward the regime three years later. The source says Qatar is relaying messages between Iran and the United States, and a spokesperson from the European Union says they are talking to the U.S. about that issue. This morning, the U.S. Air Force tested a nuclear-capable long-range missile off the coast of California. The intercontinental ballistic missile called the Minuteman III, according to the Air Force Global Strike Command, it traveled more than 4,000 miles to a test range near the Marshall Islands. The U.S. regularly tests its intercontinental weapon system to make sure that its nuclear forces are, quote, safe, secure, reliable, and effective to deter 21st century threats and reassure our allies, end quote. Today, the Inflation Reduction Act is set to become law. The White House says President Joe Biden will sign it this afternoon. The bill includes several measures, including tax credits for things like solar panels, energy efficient windows, and heat pumps. It's also affecting health care. If you're a senior, you might see lower prescription costs. If you get an enhanced federal premium subsidy for Obamacare, it'll now last through 2025. Mortgage rates rising and are making the home buying process for first time loan applicants a little bit pricier. Bad experts say that consumers still have some options when it comes to securing the best and the lowest interest rate home loan. Here's CNN's Jen Sullivan with some helpful tips. Here we go again. New data from mortgage giant Freddie Mac shows the average 30-year fixed rate mortgage rose to 5.22% in the week ending August 11th, up from 4.99% the week before, and nearly double what it was during the same time last year. You're going to have to pay more for that house because the loan is going to cost more or you're going to have to downsize um, the kind of house that you want. Whether you're refinancing or looking to purchase your first home, experts have these three tips to help you navigate home loans amid so much uncertainty. One, before you even apply, strengthen your credit score. The better credit, you're going to get a better rate. Two, explore mortgage options. Find out which type of loan works best for you. Conventional, FHA, VA, or USDA. Three, shop around. Request loan estimates from several lenders to compare rates and fees. Loan expert Jose Sano recommends asking your lender if you can lock in a rate while you shop for a home or for months or even years. If the rates go up and we don't lock those, uh, those loans, that 
that buyer might not qualify for that property anymore. And if you're still on the fence, some experts say don't wait because conditions will never really be perfect. Date the rate, marry the house. Purchase your home and you know you're going to have the opportunity, whether it's in six months or a year or a year and a half, to what? To refinance and lower your interest rate back down. For today's Consumer Watch, I'm Jen Sullivan. Outside with live gallery, we're trying to be positive today. Yes, so we are. The clouds are holding down the temperature. How about that? A little bit. <laughs> yes, right? they a little bit. And also the fact that uh, we got some rain over the last uh, about 72 hours or so is good news. Now in San Antonio, the rainfall amounts weren't too much, about a quarter of an inch of rain in San Antonio. But look at all of this healthy rain across ranch land and farmland south and southwest of San Antonio. In many areas, four inches of rain, like near Catula. Uh, Eagle Pass got almost two inches of rain, more than an inch in Del Rio. So again, this is some good news for those uh, ranch lands and farm lands down there again in San Antonio unfortunately only about a quarter of an inch of rain and it has been a very unkind year to us in fact it, this is the driest year to date on record with just over five inches of rain fall uh, the last time we were this dry was in 2011 so you all remember 2011 of course I do too how dry it was on average by this time this year we have more than 19 inches of rain so we're well behind schedule we do have a couple more chances for rain in our near future I'll be talking about that and the tropics coming up thank you so much Sarah a monkeypox case in France appears to have spread from humans to their dog According to an article in the Lancet Medical Journal, two men who live in the same household contracted the virus. Then about two weeks later, their dog, a four-year-old Italian greyhound, started to have symptoms of monkeypox and it tested positive. The couple did co-sleep with their dog and this is believed to be the first human to dog transmission of this virus. Hiccups can be frustrating, but imagine if they didn't go away and affected the rest of your body. ABC's Justin Finch looks at Tourette syndrome and ways you can reduce its impact. Tourette syndrome is a condition that causes people, most often children, to perform tics. These can be twitches, movements, or repetitive sounds. Similar to hiccups, a person with Tourette syndrome cannot stop his or her body from performing these tics. Children affected are at increased risk of being bullied. The CDC has a dedicated website listing free materials, including education, training, and programs on the condition. The site also encourages people to stand up for those with Tourette syndrome and provides recommendations for families on how to advocate for loved ones. If you notice your child has Tourette symptoms such as repetitive blinking, head jerking, grunting, or other tick behaviors, take them to a pediatrician. With this Medical Minute, I'm Justin Finch, ABC News. Cincinnati Zoo just got a little more exciting. The announcement, we've been waiting for this, the new name for their new baby hippo. Walmart seeing a big change in sales, but it's a good change how their price cuts help them reach their sales expectations. These are your top headlines for Cheddar News. Walmart has agreed to a deal with Paramount to offer Paramount Plus subscriptions to Walmart Plus members that in an effort to compete with rival Amazon. So starting in September, they'll get free access to ad-supported versions of Paramount's streaming service. Meanwhile, Uber is now ending their free customer loyalty program, Uber Rewards. Uber says users can now earn points until the end of August, and then the last day they can redeem those points is expected to be October the 31st. Now, Uber won't offer a replacement. Instead, the company plans to promote their paid members membership program, Uber One. And a new study is predicting the warming atmosphere will produce an extreme heat belt from Texas to Illinois by 2053. Regional temperatures could reach 125 degrees Fahrenheit. Researchers at the First Foundation say 8 million Americans are currently exposed to extreme heat, a number that will soar to 107 million over the next three decades. And that's your Cheddar News Update. I'm Baker Machado coming to you from Cheddar Studios in Lower Manhattan. 
A recall alert, two million baby rockers are now being recalled after a 10-month-old died because of rocker straps. The rockers involved are the Mamaru Swings and the Rockaroo uh, Rockers. Both are sold under the brand name of Four Moms. They have restraint straps that can hang down when they're not in use. Children who are able to crawl, though, get entangled in those straps if they crawl under the rocker. The Consumer Product Safety Commission has more information about this rocker recall on their website. Walmart seeing more sales and customers as a result of their prices going down. The retailer announced sales rose 9% last quarter. The surge Wall Street, despite the current inflation situation in the U.S., one thing that likely helped was Walmart recently trend prices on some products, including some big items due to being overstocked. Taking a look outside with live cam. We've got some clouds, we've got some sun, and somehow, even though we got some rain, it's still brown out there. Well, yeah, we would need a lot of rain to undo the extreme and exceptional drought out there. And over the last two days, we really only had about a quarter of an inch of rain at the airport. But the aquifer is up four tenths of a foot over the past 24 hours in the pollen count. Unfortunately, molds are up to past 9,000. Molds are high. We'll have to wait and see if those numbers go up or down. It is so humid out there that we may just continue to see molds rise. I've got a look at our rain chances in the coming days and the tropics coming up. You know, it's weird so far as August is not near as hot as it was in May, June, and July. I was about to say, like. May yeah. was more like August it's true. than this August. Yeah, I mean, well, June was at least for sure. Yeah. Uh, you know, guys, August is typically our hottest time of the year, but it just goes to show that sometimes the weather doesn't match the climate. And today temperatures are starting to warm up, but not as hot as we were in July and June. It's 88 degrees in San Antonio. It's 82 though in Del Rio and in Spofford where there's a little bit more cloud cover. You can see that temperatures are cooler out west. It's often opposite. It's often a lot warmer in Del Rio than it is here in San Antonio. 88 in Kerrville, 90 in New Braunfels, 86 in Hondo. It's already 91 in Pleasanton and 95 in Gonzales. Let's take a closer view. Let's zoom in to San Antonio. I love this satellite because you can see just about each individual cloud. That's how far our technology has gotten that we can see from space each individual cloud. Really cool there. It is mostly cloudy. It's 90 in Converse, 90 in New Braunfels, 91 in Pleasant, 88 in Rio Medina, 82 in Bernie. In Kerrville, you're at 88 degrees, but boy, is it humid out there. Dew points are in the 70s. You can see that that's at the top of our scale. That is impressively humid. It feels like a wall of water when you're walking outside, and it makes for a pretty bad hair day. It also makes it feel a lot hotter than it actually is. It's 88, but it feels like 94 in San Antonio. And so as we head into the peak heating of the afternoon, it's going to feel close to 100 in many areas like it is right now in New Braunfels. It feels like 98 in New Braunfels and 99 in Pleasanton. So for the rest of the day, as you're planning your day, temperatures should top off near 96 in the afternoon. Heat index of 100 and there is a 10% chance for a stray coastal downpour. So we'll be keeping an eye on the radar for you, but just know that odds for rain are not in your favor throughout the rest of the afternoon. Sun's going to set at 813 and it'll be a warm one. Temperatures will be in the mid 80s by 10 p.m. Let's take a look at the satellite and radar across Texas. There is that low that brought us a little bit of rain over the last couple of days and a lot of rain to south central Texas. Uh, areas out in west Texas now are getting the rain from this tropical low. And a heat high, though, is still the dominant weather factor. And you can see that over the next couple of days, this heat high is going to allow for temperatures to inch up even more. Tomorrow, we're going to be at 97. When, uh, Thursday, rather, we're going to be at 99, so close to 100. But at the same time on Thursday, a cool front is going to be pushing through north Texas. Texas. Now the front itself is going to fall apart before it even reaches San Antonio, but it is going to fire off a few thunderstorms across North Texas that could make it all the way down to the Alamo City starting Thursday night and throughout the day on Friday as well. We'll have a 30% chance for an isolated downpour. So at least we have some chances for rain in our future Thursday and Friday and in the Caribbean. There is a tropical wave 
which has about a 20% chance of developing into a tropical system in the Gulf of Mexico, the Bay of Campeche, Friday and Saturday. So about a 20% chance. So that's a low chance, but we'll be keeping an eye on things. As for rain chances, 30% Thursday and Friday. Less than that over the weekend, a passing shower, downpour is possible uh, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. Temperatures should be kept in check. The hottest will be is Friday when we'll be flirting with the triple digits. But other than that, mid to upper 90s for the high. Not too bad. Not bad at all. Thank you. If you like eating Fruit Loops for breakfast, you might like another cereal that almost sounds the same. How a famous rapper is involved in a new breakfast cereal. The new baby hippo at the Cincinnati Zoo now has an official name. The zoo had 200,000 suggestions to weed through. CNN's Jeannie Moves explains what name they chose for the new hippo and why. Bobblehead meets hippopotamus. Am I the cutest hippo or what? And now he has a name from 200,000 suggestions. It was down to Fritz or Ferguson. So we decided on baby Fritz. Fans approved, especially the father of this other Fritz. I liked pork chop instead, tweeted one killjoy. But it's impossible to kill the joy brought by the latest hippo born at the Cincinnati Zoo. Senior hippo keeper Jenna Wingate described his birth on the Today Show. And I heard a plop. Fritz is the baby brother of the famous Fiona. She was born, blink and you'll miss it, six weeks premature and had to be hand raised by keepers for a while. It took Fiona weeks to take these first steps, but her brother Fritz started walking right away, even if he ended up taking a few spills as he followed in his mother's footsteps. He's winning hearts merely by wiggling his ears to open the valves that keep out water. You, like a gum massage? <gasps> you betcha! Reminds us of the time their mother, Bibi, patiently lets sister Fiona mouth her tongue explore the roof, practically crawl down her throat, and now Fritz is opening wide. As for the name Fritz, zookeepers joke that it's apt because of BB the mother's contraceptive fail. BB's birth control was on the Fritz, and that's how this little boy came to <laughs> oh us. So. But it's no joke. Tucker, the dad, has impregnated two hippos while they were using contraceptives, often administered in bread. He's a stud. No wonder Fritz is no dud. He's already a smooth talker. <laughs> Genie Mose, CNN, New York. Still not sure about Fritz, but okay. The name, not the hippo. Famous rapper Snoop Dogg has a new business venture and it involves breakfast. It's a new breakfast cereal called Snoop Loops. The product comes from Snoop's food line that was co-founded with fellow rapper Master P. According to the packaging on the cereal, the cereal is gluten-free and multi-grain. His Food Lines website says it helps support charities, including Door of Hope, which supports the homeless community. And a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame has unveiled the rapper Nespy Hustle on Monday. Oh, is, is this supposed to is that ne Nipsey. Is, is it Nipsey? Yeah. Nipsey Hustle? Well, you know me and rap music, not real close. <laughs> Monday, which would have been his 37th birthday, the artist was shot to death outside a California clothing store he owned in 2019. The family members were on hand to take part in the unveiling. The star honors the Grammy Award-winning rapper's musical accomplishments. That's pretty good. Did you need to listen and give it a try? Super, rather, Spider-Man actor Tom Holland has announced that he is taking a break from social media. Holland issuing a three-minute video statement. It was on Instagram and Twitter saying social media has become detrimental to his mental status and he needs to back off for the time being. In the message, Holland thanks his supporters, adding he will, quote, speak to you soon. And in other rapper news, see? We got more rapping. The rapper ASAP Rocky is charged now with two counts of assault with an automatic, rather semi-automatic firearm. Police are accusing Rocky of firing the gun following an argument in Hollywood back in November. One person did get hurt. However, they, we are being told that they're going to be okay. Rocky is expected to be arraigned on those charges tomorrow. I don't know if they like rap, but we're not messing up their names.
We know them. We know them, Fiona uh, and Jen. So you yes. got that right. Yes, and we're not going to wrap for you right now, no. but what we are going to do <laughs> is tell you how you can save some money. Yes, we're going to share a list of places where your kiddos can eat for free, but it's only on certain days of the week, so you'll want to stick around for that. And, you know, what do you wish was in your school lunch? Let us know at SA Live KSAT on Facebook and Twitter, and you may see your answer in the show. And we have Tootie Pie here today, Brian Dembski, the co-owner. And you're talking about a new dessert trailer that you have, and it includes this right here. What, what am I looking at? Absolutely. Thank you for having me. And, yes, we have a new Tootie Pie trailer, and I have pie on a stick. Yes, there's pie in there and ice cream cookie sandwich Ooh. on a stick, Ooh. which is perfect summertime treat. And that's just a sample, right? That's Much just a more. sample. Yep, oh, that's okay. it. It's going to go. It's going to go. We're not going to get it back. We're not going to get it back. All right. We have time-saving uh, hacks and tips, of course, for busy moms out there with makeup. And Nadia Gonzalez with Learning a Cat Makeup is here. And you have the lipstick of all lipsticks. Tell yes, us Yes. This lipstick is amazing. It's super long-lasting. It's a new formula formula by Urban Decay and it's matte but also glossy at the same time and it lasts all day and night. All you have to do is just shake it for five seconds and then apply it and it's good to go. Ooh, good to yeah. go, all right. You have my attention. Also, you're gonna share your favorite setting spray. We need that here. Yes, yeah, setting spray is super important. <laughs> Especially on a day like today. <laughs> yes. All right, all that and more when SA Live continues in a few minutes. Give it, give it here. Thank you. <laughs> Right now may be the perfect time to try out some of San Antonio's trendiest restaurants. Now until August 27th, more than 75 restaurants are taking part in this year's Culinary Restaurant Weeks. Participating businesses are offering a fixed price menu for brunch, lunch, and dinner. Meal specials are priced between $20 and $25. If you plan to stop by one of the restaurants, it is highly recommended you make a reservation. We have a link to the list of participating restaurants on our website, kset.com. It's a wonderful time of the year. Temperatures will be warming up over the next couple of days. We'll be close to 100 Thursday, but by Thursday evening, 30% chance for a few storms. Few storms possible on Friday as well. Over the weekend, it's going to be a hot and humid weekend with just an isolated downpour possible throughout the weekend. Thank you, Sarah, and thank you for watching the news at noon with us. Time for a was pie on a stick. Is that what that was? Chocolate. That looks really good. Uh, it did look wonderful. Remember, it looked like one of those old ding dongs. You used to buy a box of them for a dozen, and you could like not eat them all at once if you <laughs> could. That was never my jam. I could eat them all at once. No. SA Live starts right now. Today on SA Live, kids eat for free. We have a list of where you can save some money at area restaurants this busy back to school season. Plus, this San Antonio native singer and former American Idol contestant gives us a special performance ahead of her new music video release this Friday. Time-saving makeup tips for all those busy women on the go. The hacks and tricks you need to know. Celebrate San Antonio. Coming to you live from historic Market Square. This is SA Live. I'm Ricky Versetti. And I'm Savannah V, and you're watching SA Live. Oh, yes, hello, and happy Tuesday, as they said. That is former American Idol contestant Savannah V and actor and singer Ricky Versetti, and we'll be hearing from them with their new song in just a little yeah. bit. I'm Fiona Gorstiza. I'm Jed Tobias Rusky. I love this hat, by the way. That's so <laughs> yes. awesome. It matches perfectly, yes. too. Yes. All right, you're looking at it on the screen. Our first guest today always brings something delicious. Tootie Pie Company has been serving pie for a long time, but their Bernie location has something new to share. And joining us today, Brian Dembski, co-owner of Tootie Pie Co. in Bernie, and you have a new dessert trailer, is this right? Yes, absolutely. Wow. We uh, This summer we went ahead and purchased a dessert trailer. It's going to be Tootie Pie Co. on the go, because we're really excited about pie. It's a year-round dessert. So we wanted to come up with ideas that you can enjoy during the summertime and not just during the holidays. And pie is always good on the go. That's right. <laughs> and that's where empanadas came from. So. Yes. All right. So what did you bring today? What, well, are, today what are we making? We are making our Tootie Sunday, mm -hmm. which is basically a pie a la mode, but it's going to be the Tootie way. So mm. um, I see y'all are going to make some today. Yep. So what you do is you just take that. This is apple crumb. Mm -hmm. And you put that into the little dish we have there. Okay. Um, it's hot, so you have to enjoy it quickly. You scoop out some ice cream, just kind of put it on top. And then um, the way I made it was with caramel and chocolate, but you always have your choice. You can do one or the other or neither. Uh, most people like to do both because yes. I think it tastes better. 
Yes. Um, then you're going to put a little bit of whipped cream on top once you get that part done. Jen's going heavy on the chocolate. I like it. <laughs> I think you're Fiona doing the caramel. Yes, it's wonderful. Go. Trade off. Mm -hmm. But what a good way to enjoy pie in the summer. It's so hot and That's you have right. this beautiful combination here. And it's in a little cup, so it's perfect yes. to take it on the go. On just the like go. Tootie Pie Co. on the go. Mm -hmm. Delicious. A little bit of cream and then we have the cherry to finish it off. And then you have a pie sundae or a Tootie sundae, if you will. Simple as yes. Easy as pie, right? Easy, easy as, as pie. pie. Yes. And what did you bring? Let's talk about well, what we, we have here. Well, we brought all kinds of things here. Let's first start with um, the cake right here. Now everyone is excited and anxious for pumpkin spice season. Well, we already have it. We have our caramel pumpkin latte cake. It is made with pumpkin and pumpkin spice as well as coffee. Absolutely delicious. Coffee, should mm -hmm. you know? Uh, can, can can we be the judge of, of that? Well, maybe can I would we love for you to judge way? this because honestly, <laughs> I mean, you are going to be wowed. We're both moms. We might be a little tired <laughs> right here. Right. Okay, right. here. And, okay. Um, okay. We also brought our big 11-inch deep dish mm -hmm. apple crumb along with our famous six-pound apple pie. We have it sliced. So you see just how thick and six beautiful pounds. it is. Six pounds. Wow. We put three pounds of apple in every pie. Mm -hmm. So it's six oh, no, pound good. apple pie. And then um, I brought our smaller version buttermilk. It's Miss Tootie's favorite. Just so y'all can see that we offer different sizes of pie. Mm -hmm. And as we continue down the line, you'll see that we have cupcakes. Those are available in the food trailer as well as in store. We have vanilla, strawberry, and chocolate. We also do a red velvet and a lemon. Um, then we have our cookies on the table. In a food trailer, we actually make them bigger and we call them giant cookies. We chocolate dip them much like the pie on the stick. Okay. Um, y'all saw that earlier. We make pie on a stick with buttermilk, key lime, um, heavenly chocolate and we're open to other ideas if you want it done we can do it key lime with the chocolate wow. I mean, can yes. you imagine that and combination? it's cold we and serve yes. it cold so it's like an ice cream pop and but it's made one. out of pie and that last one is our ice cream cookie sandwich mm -hmm. so we take these delicious chocolate chip cookies you see here put a scoop of ice cream smash it and dip it put it on a stick and you eat it on the go. Tootie mm. Pie Co. on the go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Makes it so much easier. That's and right. Yes, every day of the week there's some sort of deal, right? Yes, there is a deal every day of the week. Mondays we are doing um, in-store 250 cupcakes all day long while supplies last. Tuesday is Empanada Tuesday. Buy, buy one, get one free. Empanada, right? Empanada, which it. you I see right it. up yes. front. Um, those are great to grab and go as well. And we have mm -hmm. our fall flavors coming out soon with the pumpkin and chocolate peanut butter. Um, Wednesday is Whiskey Wednesday because we love to bake with booze, so you're going to find our Whiskey Pecan <laughs> and Irish Whiskey Cheesecake um, on special those days. Thursday is a Baker's Choice. Be sure to follow us on social so you know exactly what we have that day. Mm. Um, Friday is finally Friday. Everybody's happy for Friday and we're happy to do slices at 350 all day long. And we can't forget Saturday. Saturday is Sweet Saturday and we do $5 off any whole pie or cake. So those are the best days to come. Um, and always follow us on social so you can see more that we have to offer. Okay, and look at this, look at that inside, Fiona? this right here. Oh. No, that, that's oh, That's the empanada that you just saw there, but mm -hmm. Fiona's and She's got the pie that. on the stick. Mm -hmm. I do have pie on the stick, okay. And of mm -hmm. course, you mentioned the fall flavors that are coming, right? Yes, mm -hmm. I mentioned the pumpkins coming out, mm -hmm. um, and so is the chocolate peanut butter. And oh. the boozy, f I know, here I go, back to the booze, right? No but the boozy, Jen. you have a flight, no right, of pies yes. that you can get a little variety mm -hmm. of boozy pies. Yeah, like I said, we have, different size pies, one of which is our Tootie's Cuties, it's a little four inch pie. The flight you're referring to, it's a collection of four of those pies. It has mm -hmm. our whiskey pecan, um, vodka peach, gin key lime, and a coconut almond stout. So you get gin, beer, vodka, and whiskey, all in one. Sounds like a fun time, right Fiona? Like time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Again, located in Bernie. Now she's getting into the Bernie and I just want to see. Look oh, there. Oh, there's the go. inside of it. Okay. Oh. There we go. Okay. We're going into that. <laughs> uh, yes, again, located in Bernie, but if you'd like to keep up with the dessert truck, follow you on social media, right? Because you're yes. at different events. We're at different events. Our next event doing, we're about two weeks out. It's going to be Tug the Truck in Bernie, mm -hmm. outside of the Black Rifle Coffee Company, um, supporting the boys in blue and the fire mm -hmm. department. Wonderful. And for more information on Tootie Pie Company and Bernie, you can head over to salive.com, click the As Seen on SA Live tab, or scan that QR code right there on your screen. Brian, thank you so much. It's delicious. Thank you. All right. That was absolutely delicious, by the way. I can't wait for you to try it. Okay. So when you went to school as a kid, of course, school lunches, all right? Mm -hmm. Did you ever wish there was something in your school lunch that you didn't get? Yeah. Do, what about you? 
<laughs> well, at the time, I probably would have just really wanted like anything chocolate. Yeah, the sweets, <laughs> right? You know, when I was a kid, yes. I would want something. I would probably want something like a slice of tuna right? pie. Right? Yes. You know? Yes. You know? I, I always had the school lunch, mm -hmm. right? Which shout out to Sky Harbor Elementary on the south side because it was delicious. But I always wanted a lunchable. I don't know what it was. I saw the other kids with it. You know, was always, <laughs> the school lunch was good. But and everybody making those trades. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the I trades. Never, I never yes. had anything good to trade. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so let us know at SA Life Case at on Facebook and Twitter what you wish was in your school lunch. Uh, and you may see your answer a little later in the show. All right, well, from yummy desserts to back to school and kids eating for free. Yes, keyword there, free. I put a list together of places around town that will help you stretch the dollar, your dollar, this semester. We could all use that. Take a look. Looking to enjoy eating out while staying on a budget? Here are some places kids eat for free in and around San Antonio. Sundays and Mondays, Jim's Restaurant offers free kids meals with the purchase of an adult entree. Now you have to go eat from 5 to 9 p.m. to get the deal. Bethel's Altmex offers free kids meals with the purchase of an adult entree every Monday. Their menu includes tacos, empanadas, and more. Barbecue on the northwest side of town offers free kids meals every Tuesday. The menu items include that mac and cheese favorite, quesadillas, chicken strips, and more. Cafe Vida has two locations in San Antonio. They offer free kids meals from 4 to 9 every Tuesday, dine-in only with the purchase of an adult entree. Thursday's Center Court Pizza and Brew in the Stone Oak area offers two free kids meals with the purchase of $20 or more. Freebirds World Burrito has a handful of locations around town. They offer free kids meals every Sunday, again, with the purchase of an adult entree. We can't forget about Luby's, one of my favorites growing up. Kiddos eat for free every Wednesday and Saturday. Main event is a good option to keep the kids busy and cool this summer while having fun. But here's the cherry on top. On Tuesdays, kids 12 and under get to eat for free when you buy something from the menu of $9 or more. Cerrone's Purple Garlic off Austin Highway offers free kids meals every Wednesday with the purchase of an adult entree. The menu includes subs, pizza, salads, and more. Again, we're all about helping you save money here on SA Live. You can find this full list of restaurants on salive.com. Click the As Seen on SA Live tab or scan the QR code on your screen. All right, you know, one thing I always mm -hmm. do is sometimes I just end up sharing with the kids too. Well, that's I want to save some money because we cause don't they finish. Ne and they no. never finish no. their food. So. And then you take yeah. it home and then they don't eat it no. still because the they fridge. know that it's been in the fridge. Yep. If you're watching kids, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> For more information, salive.com. Click the ask scene on SA Live tab or scan the QR code right there on your screen. All right, well, SA Live continues with easy makeup looks for the busy mom that's always on the go now that school has started. Cuando llego yo soy la verdad y sin piedad yo, yo me despido. And we get a special performance from this former American Idol contestant that's from the south side of San Antonio. That's next on SA Live. <laughs>